Hey guys, welcome to this edition of Hey Let's Install. Hey Let's Install is a segment that I wanted to do birthed out of a problem that I ran into in the Linux community is that there's tons of distributions out there and not enough information of how they install, how they interact, um, what are they like as a daily driver. So what I try to do in this series is to install one Linux distribution, show you the installation and everything, show you the ins and outs of it so that you can make a decision if you want to use it as your daily driver. Now, for me personally, I normally use this, the virtual box, and I test out Linux distributions before I load them onto my Linux partition and use it as my daily driver. So there's kind of a incentive for me to try it too so I can then see what I want to switch up to. Currently right now I'm using a Linux Mint, which is a version of Ubuntu. But this whole segment gave birth because of this Solus right here distribution. I was looking up lightweight distributions and up and coming distributions just to see if I can uh, test out some of the newest uh, technology out there. That came up on a website I was on. So I was like, oh, let me see what's out there. There was virtually no information. So I figured why not do this series of, hey, let's install just so people can see what it is. Because, I mean, you know, this might actually be some good stuff. So I started combing the internet to find any information, and the only thing I could find was this blurb on their website. Solus Operating System is a Linux distribution built from scratch exclusively for desktop systems. There is no scope creep associated with the generic platforms, and the project aims to provide modern and focused desktop-centric solutions that is designed to keep out of the way of the user, working intuitively with virtually no configuration required. As such, there is a strong emphasis of multimedia and home computing enabling on this desktop users as they go to the daily professional lives with ease. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking, well, why not um, just do a live CD and call it quits? Because a lot of people do live CD. As you can see, this is even available in a live CD. Well, the thing is, a live CD doesn't really give you a full-blown feel of what it's like to run it as a daily driver, what it's like after it installs. On a live CD, you're using your USB drive, which the closest thing you're going to get to having a solid state on your computer, if you do not have a solid state drive, if you use a um, thumb drive, which most of you probably will to do the installation, it's going to talk directly to your RAM and it's not really configured to your computer. So you're going to get the most tame version of the operating system. Now, after you install it and it gets into your hard drive and it integrates to your settings and everything like that, then that's when you start running into issues. So let's say that you have a... Uh, when a wireless card that is flappy or whatever and you're using a live cd well the live cd makes a connection that's fine but once you install it and the drivers are installed you're going to start noticing some buggy issues which is why we're going to do the installation anyways let me go ahead and minimize this and hey let's install i'm going to start this window up here uh, let's see i'm going to pick an iso Pick the ISO, and here's the loading screen. Just click away these windows here. Click away again. There we go. Got a mouse. Now let's see if we get the rest of the interface here. So first and foremost, this is, it's saying it's very desktop centric. So I would imagine you would never use this to run any server application. So you wouldn't, you know, backdoor in a, a web server or backdoor in like a DNS service. Um, you would basically just use it as a client machine. So think of it as the difference of running Windows Server versus um just Windows Professional or Windows uh, 10 versus Windows 2012. Um, let's see, now this is your, I think this is your install button, but you got your little multi-key button here. So let's just do the installation. Uh, 
Now, the reason why I bring about being a desktop centric is that a lot of operating systems, our distributions of the Linux operating system allow you to um, run services in the background and you have a lot of good commands and stuff like that you can do. And, and because it's kernel is built that way, it's very versatile and you can run like low level um, services. I'm going to guess this is not the case for this uh, particular distribution. Let me go ahead and do an install. We're going to do English. Uh, yeah, find my location automatically. Let's see how smart you are. All right, US. There you go. Next. New York. Automatically partition. Call this machine. Okay. And username. Add myself in here. Now, as you can see right here, there's Odeon and I have admin capabilities, so I can then add another person. And then that person, if I don't check this box, will just be a regular user. So if you're using this for multiple like people in your household, this is actually pretty cool. Um, you get a one gig swap partition. And uh, so that's nice that it created that by default. I gave it one gig of memory. The purpose of swap is that when you run out of actual RAM, the swap will be the the swap spaces, which where, where you uh, can cache stuff onto your actual hard drive. So it's good to set up swap space. A lot of people don't do that. And a lot of distributions have gotten rid of the swap space. Uh, forgetting that that's what it's for. So it is good that this is actually doing that for you and you don't have to tell it, tell it okay. Because there's many distributions I've done the installation on and then basically I have to go back to it and set up my swap space. So it's good to see this does it by default. I'm gonna go ahead and let this install and next thing you're gonna see is it being complete. All right, it looks like it just finished here. So let me go ahead and close out. And we're going to go ahead and shut down this op this, uh, machine here. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove ISO. That way I know it's booting to the actual operating system and not the live CD. Nice smooth boot up. Whoops, went too far up. Now let's first go into settings. So system tools, settings. I'm gonna change my screen resolution so that it fits better in this screen I have here. So display, unknown. All right, so apparently it does not see virtual drivers. Um, keep this configuration. It might be more so a setting here, settings, hardware driver. Okay, check that out. Um, sometimes I have to push like the actual, there you go, insert guest image. Yeah, so it's like a VMware tools thing where you have to load virtual drivers onto this thing. I'm not going to bother because I don't plan on using it that long. So let's see what we got. Click on the multi-tool, which I think is pretty cool. Your accessories, your file editor, your text editor, standard internet stuff here. Not too standard here. Office only has a calendar. Normally, Office has... Um, 
like open office or something of that nature over here, but apparently they went with nothing. Uh, video, your VLC player, rhythm box, and system settings, and then your utilities. Nothing too amazing. I do like this, it has tweak tool on here. Uh, for those of you who are unaware, tweak tool is a third party application that you can load onto Ubuntu based operating systems and allows you to tweak different things like, you know, your mode or whatever here, workspaces, how many you have, um, changes what your buttons do. So you're, if you click your Windows button, it's a super button. You can disable it or it can be another alt button. So it's actually kind of cool. Um, you can add your startup applications. So if you had a uh, particular script that you wanted to run on boot, you would just add it here. So I like that. Um, let's see. So it already has your VPN stuff configured. That's nice. And this isn't so bad. I actually like this. Because uh, then you can turn off audio and things of that nature from this little slide out. Does this lock the screen? And it does. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see, what does that take you to? Does it take you back to configuration window? Yep. Um, I don't know. On the whole, I would say that I would not use this as a daily driver, but I might use this as like a utility operating system. Like if I'm doing developing code and I want to try it in a different operating system or if I'm developing a website because this is such a basic OS that there pretty much wouldn't be much getting in your way. One of the problems that I have when I develop websites is that um, depending on what plugins and what packages I have installed, sometimes my websites don't display properly so I need a third operating system outside of Windows and Linux, a third uh, Linux operating system just to see what it looks like on a completely vanilla machine. And I think this would fit the bill for that. But uh, for me as a Linux user, I don't know if I would use it because I'm a little bit more of a power user. Uh, let's see, Control Alt T, does that bring up my terminal? It does not. So let's see, terminal, terminal, terminal should be under Oh, I just saw it up here. All right, terminal. App get is not a command. So this must not be Damien base. Um, what's this button do? That was the install button. Okay, so I guess you're only doing your installations through the software center. Um, and the real reason why I'm coming up with that conclusion is that there's not a lot of software here. Uh, office software, office software. Okay, so then you can go here and add. Um, I don't know. I would say if you were a Windows user, this might be also a good operating system for you just to jump into just because of the fact that it seems to be, as the website says, very desktop focused. So if you're a Windows user and you're so used to never having to go into a command line to do anything, this might actually be a good interim um, operating system to use before using something like an Ubuntu or an Arch Linux or something of that nature. But also in the end, this is uh, the Solus 1.2. So take it or leave it, guys. I probably just use it as um, testing operating system, but hey, I'm sure there's people out there who's going to really enjoy it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, share, and tell your friends.